Who the hell is this guy? Why is he wearing that? Oh, Jesus. Dude, dude, hey. You. Yeah, you. Who could I possibly be talking to? You're in the infinite white background. Yeah, you're wearing a hat with a logo on it. Not so good. It's not advisable. N no, don't be an idiot. Now he's, he's talking to the vlog audience. Hang on a second. Okay, he's done. Let me explain to you why. In your video production, specifically if you're doing it for a client, if it's a paid gig, omit having any branded logos on the video. I mean, the chance of somebody coming after you is slim, but especially when dealing with clients, there could be zero room for error, there could be zero room for, for a chance of something like that happening. If your depiction of the product shows that brand in a negative light, that's going to be a major red flag. So if you show somebody in a, a Chevy, for example, and they get in an accident, the airbag doesn't deploy for some reason, and they die. And that's part of the plot or the movie or whatever. Chevy's gonna be pretty pissed because they're saying, well, you're kind of insinuating that our airbags and our security features do not work, and they will likely come after you. Actually, even the big guys mess up from time to time. NBC was sued over the pilot episode of Heroes, which you see here, by Emerson Electric. Their Insincorator product was featured in the episode only to immediately mangle someone's hand. But otherwise, it's basically seen as free advertising if it's just they're driving an Audi and nothing bad is happening as a result of driving said Audi. It's probably not going to be a problem at all. For clients, again, always earn the side of caution. All right, I'll show you guys how to do this in post-production using Adobe Premiere CC. All right, so here we have the clip that we want to apply the blur effect to. Go to the Effects tab. Start typing Gaussian Blur, and there it is. Now, huge time saver, of course. You saw what I did instead of going through video effects, blur sharpen. It just type it in the search field much, much faster. Drag it on the clip. Now, of course, you want to apply blurriness to everything. The blurriness, you know, you want a four-point polygon mask. Now, it starts off at four-point. You can add more, which I will do because this is not uh, a perfect rectangle. automatically creates the points as I click on the line. There we go. Now, up the blurriness. All right. Now, in the old days, what you'd have to do is you'd have to track, go forward one, and change it a little bit, forward one. You, you gotta do it frame by frame, huge time suck. In the latest version of Adobe Premiere CC, they've added motion tracking to this. So go to mask path here on the Gaussian blur, Track selected mask forward. And let it work its magic. It is a beautiful thing. Now, it doesn't work perfectly. Um, if, let's say, somebody walks in front of the camera right now, uh, it's going to screw it up pretty badly. you got to stop it and, and redo it. Um, but for the most part, for most applications, it's fantastic. Now, of course, it only did, you see this right here, these are all the, the keys. It only did up to here. Everything before, it just stays in one spot. So. Now you could track it backwards. Now, I know for a fact I turned my head at one point and that's gonna really screw the tracking up, so I, I'm hovering over the stop button. Once it really starts to go off the rails, I'll stop it, tweak it a little bit manually, and then start it up again. Let's see how fast, how far I can go here before I have to stop it. Oh my God, I look really weird. Let's see, it's starting to get a little bit funky, but I think it's okay. Yeah, stop there, because the craftsman's starting to poke through a little bit. I'll go back a few to when it started doing that. Yeah, like right about. Correct it. And then just have it do it again. There we go. See, there, there, there's the screw up. Let's go back to when I just start turning my head. Now, that's not totally needed because it's a pure white background. Um, but in other situations, you might have some kind of a background. It's going to look screwy, so. Of course, now's your chance to do things like this, too. Now, 
Now you can only do, you could go back just one frame at a time, that way you have more control when it's kind of funky like this. See, I'm not going to worry about it because it's just a white background, it's cool. Um, that's fine, I'll just go a little bit more. Then I turn towards the camera, then I go down. And stop there. Yes, so I'm going to go up the rails. So bring it back a few. The logo starts showing again. Unfortunately, I start moving quickly, so even without the blur, yeah, you can still see it, kind of, but it's starting to get harder to see. So what I'll do often in these situations is, let it keep going, and I may even remove the blur completely, but you can still kind of see the craftsman here, so. And there we go. Now I'm off screen. That's fine. Let's watch all the way through. See now, you can kind of see it around the edges, which I'm not a huge fan of. So what I'm going to do is, not so much mask feather. You want to expand the mask just a little bit. Let's say you did what I did just now, and it just wasn't enough. It just, you need a little bit more. Instead of going back and rekeying everything, go to mask expansion, just increase that just a little bit. There we go. Now this isn't keyed. There's no keys here, so that will be that will apply itself across the board. So let's watch that through again. But by, by the way, see that? Yeah. Uh, my hat was left alone in a room for a little while with Stevie, and he decided. He wanted to chew on my hat. That's what that's from. Anyway. So there you go. That right there took less than five minutes and saved hours and hours worth of work. Let's take a look at that now at a, at a normal 100%. Much better. And you're good to go. Now another application for the blurring is License plates, that's a very, very common one. Uh, I have a vlog and I blur my license plate at every opportunity. You'll see it, obviously when it's stationary, it's much easier, um, but there are times where I'm driving into frame or driving out of frame and uh, the motion will stay with that license plate. I'll actually link a video here, one of my vlogs. Uh, that was one of the more complicated ones I did because it drove into frame but also got closer so it had to get larger. Another application is if you're blurring faces. So let's say you're doing something for a client, it's a group shot, and you didn't get release forms from some of the crowd, you can blur their faces using the same exact technique. Instead of having the four point polygon mask, there is an oval uh, that's more suited for faces and things like that. So um, same exact concept, just a different shape. And the other way to do this is taking care of it in production. You get some good old gaffer's tape here. And you just put it right over the offending logo. There we go. Okay, it doesn't look the best, but that's uh, one way to do it. Hey, hey, no, 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 no. Do not touch that. Don't take it off. Yeah. Okay, so. Uh, no, no, no. Oh. Oh, jeez. I gotta blow that thing out now, too. You're an idiot. No, don't take... Oh, come on, man. Yeah, you, you, look, you look very attractive doing that. Hope you found this video helpful. Give it a thumbs up if you like it. If you want to see me make more just like this one. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. I do put out videos every week on tips, tricks, advice, how-to, gear reviews, etc. Thanks. I'll see you in the next one.